Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Patrick Almond. I run a digital marketing agency and a self-improvement brand right here on my shirt. Hopefully you're seeing it going the right direction called Stop Doing Nothing. Uh, today's show is gonna be a little bit of a short one. I just wanna to talk to you about some things that I'm thankful for and some, when I think about being thankful, what I want to turn that around into. Uh, like all people, I have the general things in the world that I'm thankful for. Thankful for family, thankful for healthy family. Uh, even though my family circle is pretty small and pretty tight, you know, parent-wise, uh, I've got my mom, my wonderful mom who adopted me, uh, no brothers, no sisters. So as far as I know, in, in the, um, in the, as far as the parental, the fratricide, the, fratri the fraternal and sister side and mother father side of things, I have no uh, blood relatives. I'm adopted and the only person alive right now is my awesome mom who lives in Seattle, Washington. And I'm very thankful that she's in good health. And for the most part, we happen to get along. Uh, as happens sometimes with, with family members, we had a, a little bit of a fight recently. And so we're not getting along the best right now. But, um, but still, I'm very thankful that she's alive. I'm very thankful that she's healthy. And we've kind of started to mend the fences a little bit, just a very little bit, just a crack on some of our, some of our differences right here. I think it's just... It's just, you know, typical stuff where people have conflicts and uh, we're just got to figure out how to get along with each other as we both get, you know, a little bit older in this world. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, I'm thankful that business is going halfway decent. Had a, a record year here at Focus Digital Marketing, which is one of, uh, one of the two things I work on at Stop Doing Nothing Coaching and then Focus Digital Marketing, which is the agency side of the business. And things had a record year here and I'm very thankful for that. Um, I'm very thankful to have really good clients, one of which I get to go see here. I'm going to travel to Fort Myers, Florida uh, here, and I get to go see my client in, uh, I think, well, Friday morning, spending all day, Friday and Saturday, with a great group of people, my client company. And then I'm also very thankful that on the return trip from that, I'm going through Dallas and then going right over to Fort Worth, uh, where I have a multiple day speaking engagement. So... Um, Again, just some very happy end of year things going on. Uh, 2020 is going to hopefully start off with a bang. I'm putting all those pieces in place to make 2020 start off with a bang. Uh, that, that's all I can do is put all the pieces in place and make my dominoes fall and do all the planning I can. So I'm very thankful for that. Uh, and as I'm thinking about all these things I'm thankful for, I'm trying to think of ways that I can repurpose this thankfulness and uh, take all of the bonuses and benefits I have in my world uh, and, um, and, and basically pass those on to other. So I made kind of a list of things here, and this mainly involves helping others, because that's the first thing I think of when I come to mind on thankfulness, is I'm lucky. I'm so lucky to have things above and beyond my basic requirements. Uh, we sometimes we have to reset ourselves because we get in that mindset of, of being, you know, very privileged with the Starbucks and the, and the Amazon one day delivery and the, the hamburgers that we basically walk up and snap our fingers to and hamburgers are made and brought to our car window and we just give them a little piece of plastic right there. And, uh, and so we just get, you know, privileged with that stuff sometimes. So I want to kind of encourage you while you're listening to me today to take a step back and realize the, just the very basic requirements you need in this world and how lucky you are to have things above and beyond those. So, so in that spirit, some of the notes I was taking, like I said, is helping others. And I would always, you know, love your comments in the comment window below. But the first thing that, that comes to mind, which is helping others, is, you know, right off the bat, we can go to the default one, helping homeless people. And this really hit home recently and just kind of got me thinking because I was hanging out uh, at a local uh, coffee shop, a local Starbucks. If you're in Oklahoma City, you know, the Starbucks, uh, if you think about the Starbucks that's at Northwest Expressway and in Independence on the northwest corner. It's one of the ones I frequent because it's really late. It's open till like 11 p.m. because there's a hospital right there. So the 24-hour hospital staff hangs out. Uh, and it's also popular for students. But I also know whenever I go there and hang out, it's popular for homeless people also. And there's just regular homeless people in there. I've bought them things uh, on occasion, food, drink, and the staff there is really forgiving. You know, they're, they're really cool about that, especially in the, uh, especially in the cold temperatures time. So um, I was there recently and saw an act of generosity that really kind of hit me hard. And I've been telling some other friends about this. Is a gentleman came in, one of the, one of the regular homeless people came in, 
um, with a, a trash bag, and not a dirty trash bag, a clean trash bag. And he was in a really good mood, probably in a better mood than anybody else in Starbucks, sitting there in their nice warm shoes and coats and blankets and stuff. The guy was just lit up. He was having a great day. Something had happened to him. I didn't know what it was. Uh, so I just kind of sat there, you know, drinking my whatever three or four dollar coffee with a cynical look on my face because I'm just like that sometimes, let's be honest. Uh, and I watched what happened to him. And what had happened was is somebody had given him this plastic sack some probably faith-based organization or an individual had given him this plastic sack with things uh, to basically help him out in his current state. Uh, I'm assuming his state's not permanent, but you know what? Let's, let's not, let's be very real about it. He's homeless. And so someone had made a plastic garbage bag, probably several of these, and driven around to homeless people and had basically given him a bunch of the things that we just consider very basics. This guy was very happy to get. In that bag, in that sack was, I think, a new coat, um, a tent. Somebody bought this guy a tent. Uh, some of those hand uh, chemical warmers, you know, the ones I'm talking about, where you you can kind of break them and um, put them in your pockets, and they keep your hands warm. Someone had bought him some of those. Uh, someone had slipped a Bible in there, so I'm guessing it was a very faith-based person. And there were a couple of other things in there. I don't think there was actual food in there, but just some of the very basics that the guy needed. And after a while, it was just kind of cool to sit back there and watch him be very happy with, you know, with the basics of the world. And um, do yourself a favor sometime. Take some time and, and reset and think about the basics that you have. Uh, you know, Vinny, I know you guys have had some issues with flooding, to say the least, right? Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, we really kind of have to be thankful for when we have disasters and we have tragedies in life as much as they suck. And I don't ever want to downplay anyone's disasters or tragedies, but I hope if that ever happens to me that I'm able to kind of step back and realize, oh, you know what? I'm standing, if my house is on fire and every belonging I have is burning to the ground, you know what? I'm clothed. I've got on a shirt, underwear, pants, socks, shoes. 10 fingers and 10 toes. And everything else up there that's burning, as long as it's not living, is replaceable. Um, so, you know, that's okay, some photos and stuff may not be replaceable, but um, if you can walk away from a tragedy in life, whether it's um, um, a fire or flooding um, or things like that, um, if you can stand there on your own two feet, thanks, Vinny, um, and, and, and sit there and sulk about it and be sad about it, um, it's okay to take the sulkness in, if that's a word, and the sadness and the resentment and the hate and the anger and the fear. That's all okay. It really, really is. But when all that's said and done, it's very important for you to basically realize, shit, man, I've got 10 fingers and 10 toes. And with 10 fingers and 10 toes and the right head on my shoulders, you can recover all that stuff. Um, whether it's paperwork, you know, everyone else has a copy of the paperwork stored someplace else. Insurance, paperwork, bills, life insurance, that's all stuff. Clothes we can replace, cars we can replace, um, old family photos we can't replace and that really sucks. Computers we can replace. Always make sure that shit's backed up. But if you want to be the kind of person who, who kind of resets yourself and, and doesn't get um, too ingrained in the privileges that we have, just do yourself a favor on occasion and reset yourself back and appreciate the basics. So the homeless people is something that's on my mind and I'm gonna personally try and do more in that area of life. Uh, an area that I do give time to and I can never give enough time to, even if I dedicated my whole life to, is, is primary education for our students in this world. And I'm talking about teachers, specifically in elementary school, because that's the area where I volunteer in. And I take that responsibility very seriously. Um, and shout out if you're a teacher watching here. And if you're not a teacher, tag a teacher, just so we can let them know how much we appreciate them. But um, if you ever sit in a primary school for a while, my primary in the US, I'm talking about um, pre-K uh, through fifth grade. Let's just focus on that one because the school where I volunteer, that's the particular focus range. You realize uh, how important the very basics are in life. A, B, C, one, two, three, things like that. And um, what you also realize very fast is that every single school, like in this level, is understaffed. And what's happening more and more in the particular situation, and I will speak with this with firsthand experience, is it feels like um, 
kids in this in this lower level are dealing with more and more issues and they're having more and more challenges and because they spend the vast majority of their awake time Monday through Friday at school these challenges are being shown at school they're being exercised at school they're being demonstrated at school and so you know you when you think about dangerous places to work um, you may think oh you know high schools are probably dangerous because kids are getting rowdy in high school or maybe colleges are dangerous people are carrying guns in college and fighting and killing people that stuff is starting to trickle down lower and lower in our school system and so you're having you know third fourth fifth grader kids attack each other and attack teachers and getting violent and getting hostile and you're having things like campus police showing up to deal with these challenges which you would think why yeah because um, some of them are parenting issues, I will admit, but, but um, some of them are just the challenges of our education system, and there is no good answer. And money, do not even begin to think that money throws things at it. So uh, my contribution there is time and helping out and making sure that you know, the teachers are safe when I can. And so when you think about other ways you can help, there's obviously the homeless situation, but consider spending some time at a school, especially uh, an entry-level school, possibly a school with challenges out there and and just help just show up and be there you you can be there to play basketball with the kids you can be there to chat with the kids uh, you can be there if, uh, if, a, if a kid's having a very bad day and having a meltdown and you can just sit out in the hallway and quietly chat with that kid while the teacher can make progress with the other 20 or 30 students you know, in the, in the room. That's something very simple you can do. And if you walk into any elementary school and you tell the, the PTA or the principal that you want to volunteer, as long as you go through a sufficient background check and you're not some weird person, they would gladly love your time there. There's lunchroom time, there's playground time, there's office making copies time. There's helping kids with ABCs one, two, three times. So there's so many things you can do in that area also. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the veteran community. I myself am a veteran and I'm privileged enough that again, I am fairly young. I have 10 fingers, 10 toes and all my mental capacity. But you visit any veterans hospital out there and you realize that there are just some people in some bad situations. Some people who have done and what I would consider, you know, amazing things um, for our country. You like it or not, that's up to you. But veterans out there, in my opinion, deserve have a very special place in my heart. And so I know there are opportunities uh, if you're if you're feeling very prosperous this season to possibly visit a veterans hospital and just sit with someone and talk with them and learn about their life and their service and their hopes and their wishes and their dreams. That's something you can do because sometimes people just want an ear, to bend an ear right there. Uh, and the last one that comes to mind, and again, I would love your ideas below. The last one, the, in my opinion, one of the last areas we can take some of this thankfulness and turn this around to being nice is in the retail industry. Uh, in the comments of the Facebook Live here, I talked about uh, going out on Black Friday and how insane that is and how much I am not a fan of it. And I 100% believe that. However, if you are a person that's going to go out shopping today or tomorrow or a week or six months from now, um, please do not treat people in the retail world, whether it's food or clothing or whatever. Please do your best to be thankful for their contribution and don't treat them like shit. We have to remember that oftentimes retail jobs, at least in our country, the United States, um, are some of the lowest paying ones and highest demand ones. And that's, that's just the way we want it. That's a commerce decision, a capitalist decision that we've chosen to make. So people are getting paid lowly wages to deal with a variety of people shopping and around looking for things. And I've noticed that we tend to take these people for granted and oftentimes we just tend to stomp on them as if their life wasn't already hard enough working 18 hour days at um, some, some ungodly rate that they're very not happy with and maybe their only choice. Uh, so when you're out and about and dealing with people in either food service positions or retail positions or positions where people know are working long hours on their feet, do your best to please not treat them like shit. Be thankful for the fact that they are bringing you hot food, hot beverages, ready-made clothes, and just dumping them in your lap. And all you have to do is swipe your credit card and bam, you've got that, you've got that thing. Um, so that's my take right there on being thankful. Uh, I didn't put any pictures of turkeys or cranberries on Facebook. That's just not my jam. I didn't put uh, you know, a perfectly constructed meal before everyone dives in on Facebook. 
had a great one. I was lucky enough to go visit some friends and hang out with them for the holidays. But that's just not that's just not my jam. I'm more into being thankful for the people. And like I said, thankful for helping others, the homeless people, teachers, people in retail, and veterans. And so if you're a person that has an abundance in your life, and by abundance, I mean anything above the basics, above the basics of food, water, and shelter, uh, try to do yourself and turn around to one of these groups that I mentioned right here and give back to them. You can give monetarily. I'm perfectly okay with that. Or you can give with your time. I tend to be a person that gives more of my time. Uh, my whole school volunteer gig I'm into now came as a result of me giving my time rather than money. And I have been told that my time has been worth much, much more than that money. So find a way to use the abundance in your life as you think about it this Thanksgiving, uh, this holiday season, and turn that around into somebody else. That was my simple message for the day. Um, do me a favor, as always, uh, like this, share this, comment below. I'm going to upload this to YouTube, and this is also going to be a podcast. I like to remind people that if, you are, if you're a person that's watching the visual show on Facebook or YouTube, go over and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. And if you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher or iHeartRadio or Spotify, go over to YouTube, subscribe, follow. We're on YouTube. We're on Stitcher. The Stop Doing Nothing Live uh, fa Facebook fan page. You can follow us there also. So just if you, if you appreciate the content that we put out, we've got several Facebook Lives going on. Go there, go to the website and subscribe. Uh, and until tomorrow, um, you know what? Be thankful for what you have, as William Devon would say.